what you allow in your presence is the standard. Those are the words that adorn the walls here at Rogue Fitness in Columbus, Ohio. And today, we are definitely in the presence of excellence as the top athletes from CrossFit's past and present are here to compete in the 2019 Rogue Invitational. Thanks for being with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Bill Grunther. And Bill, we have never seen a field this deep in any qualifying event ever. I mean, are we at the CrossFit Games right now? That's exactly what it feels like. The level of competitors that are here is unreal. And I'm not, ta I'm not talking about just the big names. Mm -hmm. We got names from our past. 13 of the 16 CrossFit Games champions ever are gonna be here competing. It's gonna be a fun two days. Let's look at what is on tap for Saturday and Sunday here in Columbus, Ohio. We have eight individual events that will be contested over two days. We have seven team events and four for the legends. Four events for the individuals today, three for the, the teams, and then four for the teams tomorrow, and four for the individuals. Two each, each day for the legends. The teams are gonna kick things off first. And we mentioned the individuals, how deep that field is. This field is loaded as well. Seven of the eight teams in this field have already qualified. I'm sorry, finished in the top 10 of the CrossFit Games last year. Three of them have already qualified and Mayhem Freedom is looking to make another trip to the CrossFit Games and trying to track down a repeat as the game's champion. I mean, if you're going to talk about teams, you're going to talk about Mayhem Freedom. I mean, Rich Froning does what he does best, which is he puts together the best teams out there and just absolutely dominates. They've already dominated this year with their Asia uh, Championship. That's where they qualified, and they had that switch. If you take out someone like Lindy Barbara, who is a games veteran, and have her on your team, you move someone out, you got to fill that spot, and my, you fill it with China Cho. What an unbelievable addition, and I'll tell you what, they absolutely crushed the Asia Championship, and that's going to be a great addition to the team. And when you look at their resume and what they have done over the years of the CrossFit Games, it is no secret as to why they are not only the favorites here in Columbus, but also when we get to Madison. Roy McCurden is the third member of our broadcast team. He is on the field with more on CrossFit Mayhem Freedom. Sean, Bill, with the addition of China Cho, Mayhem Freedom will be trying to track down their fourth championship at the CrossFit Games. Their team captain, Rich Froning, already has four individual championships as well. As such, he is the most iconic athlete in the sport of fitness and deserves a spot in the Legends competition, certainly. So we will see Rich compete as a legend throughout the course of the weekend, in addition to his work here with the teams. We caught up with Rich earlier to talk about balancing those two responsibilities. Yeah, I mean, definitely the in the Legends events, those will be fun, both of those. Um, Amanda, it was the first workout I ever did at the CrossFit Games, so it'll be kind of cool. Uh, the shooting biathlon is going to be pretty challenging. The, the standing uh, shooting is, is tough. Um, but then the team stuff will be, be a lot of fun. You know, team stuff is the stuff that I enjoy now. Um, you know, being able to share those, those events and, and do those things with other people is a lot more fun than, than the individual side. I caught up with Rich before the competition backstage. He said, even though they're pre-qualified, expect nothing but less than the best from Mayhem Freedom. They're trying to set the tone for another championship at the Games right now. Thank you, Ro. Event number one is Go Ruck, and the athletes have already adorned those packs, and they will be doing all of this work with those packs on. And a new challenge here is that cart, something we haven't seen in competition before. And you might not see the cart yet that's because it's not put together. And that's part of the object of this test. You know, it's a standardized uh, testing that they use in Special Forces, and that's why they decided to bring this out for the teams. It tests exactly what these teams need to do, which is communicate. And they need to put that cart together and move a bunch of weight with it. And those are those big sandbags, 275 pounds and 225 pound bags. They got to carry that for basically a mile and it's going to be fun. Here are the lane assignments for this first of seven events here at the 2019 Rogue Invitational. Two teams from CrossFit Mayhem, Independence and Freedom. Three of these teams have already qualified for the CrossFit Games. One invitation up for grabs here over the next two days. Event one is underway. The teams will make their way to the rig, and they will have to all complete two rope climbs. And so I see these athletes working up this rope. Now, now, for these athletes, everyone at this level has done rope climbs, weighted rope climbs. They, most of these guys have done it with either their 20 or their 15 pound vest on. This is a 30 pound vest. And one of the differences is with that ruck pack, all the weight's on the back. So there is going to be a little bit of a balancing difference as those guys and girls are working their way up that rope. They really need to make sure that they utilize their feet and have a nice strong foothold. You can see Rich right there in the middle of your screen in lane five, locking those feet together. 
right there is Camille Bazinet in the, in the LeBlanc Bazinet in the, in the purple pants. Again, good, strong hold and try to save those arms as much as possible. You want to keep that breathing rate down. And it's one of the nice things, uh, nice things, whatever, is that you don't have the weight on the front. So it allows these guys to breathe a little bit more. But for these teams, just like in everything else, there is a certain key to the teams, and it's going to be the three Cs. Now, we always talk about communication. That's paramount. You have to know what everyone's doing, and you have to know where everyone is. But the other two, coordination and then confidence. Coordination is going to be in building that cart and then moving that cart. They have to know where everyone is and what everyone can do, and they have to be very confident about their movements. If they start getting frustrated, they're gonna really have issues, and the ones that can keep it solid and together, they're gonna come out the victors. There are 32 scored repetitions in this event. CrossFit OC3 and Victus Back Bay and CrossFit Balance are all through six of those, as each of these rope climbs counts for one. As he gets to the top. That's Jessica Griffith from Team Ron Wad Witt. They are one of the three teams that has already qualified for the CrossFit Games. It did that by earning the Wadapalooza invite. Oh, Alex Smith on the rope for Ron Wad Witt. And again, this, this first element of this event is just about getting started. They don't have to crush themselves in this first part. They aren't going to win the event if they win the rope climbs, they just need to get started. Keep everyone together, keep a nice solid feel between that team because they have to build and do a lot of work and they move all that way. OC3 was the first done with those eight rope climbs and in lane two Invictus Back Bay, they were done early as well. And also CrossFit Balance. And now the teams have to put that cart together and they were able to practice this a little bit yesterday. That's Rich, I'm oh, sorry, that's at lane eight, that's CrossFit Balance. They are now, we'll make that CrossFit 417. They are next to CrossFit Balance in uh, lane number eight. So CrossFit 417, I believe, is on the right of your screen. And then it's CrossFit Balance in lane eight. And look at the way that they're putting that together. You have one athlete in the middle holding the weight up, getting the other two athletes sliding the, the, the tires on. Very NASCAR-ish, if you will. You know, that's the team and shit. You gotta have that that idea to put it together and to do it quickly. The CrossFit balance, Craig Williams, Patrick Kelly, Elizabeth Perry, and Zoe Pond McPherson now have to load those sandbags onto the cart. And then they have to drag those to the next station. OC3, they are also loading their sandbags up. They are a team that last year stood on the podium. They're out of Davenport, Iowa. The roster has changed a little bit. Colin Carty is actually not competing. He is the coach of their team. As Joe Persanti and now Luke Schaefer. So Persanti and Schaefer are in the front. There are three team members have to be in contact with that cart at all times. And one of the things I like, they didn't really, they just said you had to go out this particular direction. They didn't say that there was a lane, you got to stay in your lane. So you were going to see a lot of jostling, especially at that first turn, which you did see with Balance and OC3. But it looked like Balance was able to hang out to the front. I think that uh, if you look, Balance, or I'm sorry, OC3 is just getting out to the lead there. And hanging off, you see three people on the cart. Taylor Williamson is not on the cart, so she's basically watching them, seeing how everyone's doing. Now, they said you only need to have three. We talked to some of the Ruck guys earlier. They said get as many people on that cart as you can. I think that's going to be a better move, especially early. Let these guys rest as much as possible. That's exactly what Mayhem Freedom is doing. They have all four of their members on that cart as they make their way out of the outdoor stadium here. The Rogue Campus in Columbus, Ohio. OC3, they are your leaders, and there is no right or wrong way to move this thing. Yeah, and that's exactly when we talked to the Rutt guys earlier today, we, we were asking them point blank, what is the best way to move this? And his answer was, I don't know. He said it's gonna depend on the team, uh, the strengths and weaknesses of that particular team, and they have to figure that out basically on the fly. That's why this is a testing process for special teams, because that's the kind of work you have to do. Um, I think that it's best to put all four people on the team, but we see OC3 right there pulling, but they also said it's fine to push it. So if these teams decided to turn that around and push it more like a wheelbarrow, that's, avail that's available to them as well. But man, I would try to put as many people on that as possible. 
Ramwad Witt making their way out as Jessica Griffith is not on that car. Behind them is Mayhem Independence, and that's Misfit. Don't stop Misfit, another team that has already qualified for the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games as they earned the invite from the Mid-Atlantic CrossFit Challenge. You can see these teams all trying, all these guys are trying to figure out what the best strategy is going to be. Trying to switch their people around from the front to the back, trying to like cycle through. You see OC3 right here, right here, letting one person come out to rest. But again, I just think that with what they have to do, if you can get everyone on there sharing it, it's going to be a little bit better for the teams. Get some people on the back and really push in the back. Get some people to push from behind. Ramwad Witt. It's Camila Blanc Bazinet in the Purple Pants is now resting for them as they're trying to figure this thing out. And this test is inspired by something that you would see during Team Week during Special Forces selections where the candidates are given a challenge to construct something that can move some weight. And that's exactly what we're, we're seeing here uh, in this opening event of the 2019 Rogue Invitational. And with these, we talked about the three C's earlier about being confident in your decision. These teams all have to know that whatever plan that they choose to go with, that that's going to be the good plan and they got to go for it. They can't stop and slow down and get frustrated because they feel that the card is heavy. Because guess what? The card is heavy and it's awkward and it's meant to be that way. So accept that and then be able to move yourself forward as best you can. Just keep moving, keep your head down, keep doing your work. OC3 continues to lead. Let's send it down to Rory McKernan with more. Yeah, Sean, Bill, the GORA team didn't just dream this up out of nowhere. They actually borrowed it from their past in the Special Forces. And what it does is very similar to the worm that we've seen in past years of regional and CrossFit Games competition. You're going to have to communicate under stress, and we're going to see some of the teams here having more trouble with that. Not only did they have to put this device together, they have to now decide what is the best way, as you mentioned, Bill, and then adapt on the fly as things are going well or not going as well. I want you guys to pay attention when they come back to the arena because I had a great look down here. It is a narrow lane and a lot of choke points on the entry and exit, and there was some rubbing and racing on the way out the door. Thank you, Roe, China Cho, Rich Froning, Teja Brasevich on the card for Mayhem Freedom. They're starting to gain a little bit of ground. They're making their way to the sandbag lift. There are eight sandbags that they have to then load onto a, a platform, and then they have to drag their cart back into the outdoor stadium here and then drag those bags that are on their carts across the finish line. So a lot of work still left here as we are past the eight minute mark. And OC3, they had the lead early after the rope climbs and they held it during the construction of that cart and they have remained out front here is the team of Joe Persanti, Luke Schaefer, Taylor Williamson, and Andrea Niesler. Now again, these guys are trying to figure this out on the fly, just like what Roe was talking about. Look who's doing the work here. It's the two women in the front. They're pulling. The guy in the back, he's not really pushing. He's just kind of hanging out. So we have two people that are really not doing a lot of work. If we saw what Freedom, uh, made, uh, Freedom was doing, Rich Froning was right in the middle, along with his two athletes at the front and having uh, an athlete in the back. So there was a lot of work, all three happening in the front, not just two people. I think that's what these teams need to do is get everyone on there, get everyone pulling that way. And we discussed earlier with the Go Ruck team about what the correct way to, to move this is. There's no rule that says they can't turn it around and push it like a wheelbarrow. Exactly. And he said that that also might depend on the the, uh, the type of ground that you're on. If it's super smooth, do it like a wheelbarrow. If you have to do more of a, like, like that right there, what 417 is doing, that's that wheelbarrow style. Jared Stevens and Tyler Christoffel pushing for 417 as OC3. They have yet to earn an invite to the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games. They are in the lead here in this first of seven events of this weekend. And they are approaching the sandbags and they will have to move eight sandbags up and onto that shelf. There will be four 100-pound bags and four 200-pound bags that they need to move before they can get back on their cart and make the trip back here to the outdoor stadium at Rogue Fitness in Columbus, Ohio. So OC3, we have all four of those athletes are finally doing work. I think that's a good place for them to be. And they're now at that wall where they can start moving those sandbags. And Mayhem Freedom, they are coming in second, so they were able to make up a lot of ground on that cart move. You gotta remember, that's what Rich does. He's like, hey, you go head out there on the first piece, blow out all those anxiety and all those, uh, all those jitters, we'll come right up behind you. That's what they did. OC3, the first team onto that 
sandbag move as they have to lift those 100 and 200 pound bags up and over and push them over that, those hay bales. Sort of akin to what we saw a couple years ago during, the, uh, during the, <laughs> the Madison triplets at the 2017 Reebok CrossFit Games. Now Mayhem Freedom, they're getting to work on their sandbags. OC3 is done, and they're working their way back to the outdoor stadium. Then they'll have to unload the bags that they have in their cart, and they will have to drag them across the field to the finish line. And really, this part of the sandbag move, by this point, the teams are, have sort of figured out what they need to do. What's the best way for them to move this? They get into a little bit of a routine, and then they stop them right in the middle, make them do some other work, and then they have to find that routine again. So it's just enough to kind of kick you in the gut as you get moving. That's all. We've you been know. talking about the carts. We've been talking about the sandbags. Remember, they're doing all this work with those ruck packs on. You were able to put one of those on before we came on air here. What was it like moving around with that thing? It's 30 pounds on your back, 20 pounds for the ladies. It's cumbersome because they said that the best way to wear it is high on your shoulders, which any other kind of packing that I've ever done or that we usually do, if you want to try and get it a little bit low or tight on you, um, they said that there's a weight a waist strap, but they suggested not to use that. So it's really high up on your shoulders, which put, it does put tension on your shoulders, but it does hold your shoulders back. And the nice thing is you don't have it bearing in front of you. So it's a little bit, it's just different. It's not that it's cumbersome, it's just different. And it is a little heavier. 30 pounds and 20 pounds is heavier than what these athletes would do on a normal basis. Every team has gotten to the sandbags now, but OC3 is just leaving the entire field behind them. As they are looking to lock up 100 points with an event win, the scoring a little bit different for this event. The winner of the event will get 100. Second place will receive 90. Third gets 80. Fourth, 72. Fifth, 64. Sixth, 56. Seventh place will receive 50. And then eighth is 44 points. A win very valuable here in these events. And if you saw, there was a little dip in the road there for OC3. They were able to kind of jog going downhill, which I think was smart. Let the gravity, you want to try to make gravity work for you as much as possible. Get a little bit of momentum before you go to those hills. So that person that's kind of hanging off on the side resting, they need to be very aware of what's coming up so they can cue the team to, hey, we, need, we can start running or we got to climb this hill. Even if it's a small hill, it still feels like a hill if you're pulling 500 pounds. Taylor Williamson is on the right. Andrea Nistler is on the left as they are way in front of the rest of the pack. Mayhem Freedom was the second team to the sandbags. And now more teams have finished up the sandbag portion of this event, and they are back on their cards. Approaching the 14-minute mark here of the opening event of the 2019 Rogue Invitational, the first of seven events for the teams. They will do three today and then four tomorrow. So you can see we're moving up a hill. This is where we got to get all four people on there. Even though we're swapping people out, that's great. But why have two people doing all the work? Now, the, we do. We saw the one athlete move from the front to the back to start pushing. That's great. But man, get on those poles. That's what Freedom is doing to keep them up in that top two position. They're moving synced the entire time. There isn't someone just hanging off to the side. Mayhem Freedom just came around the corner in the back, so they look like they might be gaining a little bit of ground here on OC3. And Mayhem Freedom looks like they do have all four of their athletes on that cart. Top three teams on your screen. It's OC3 followed by Mayhem Freedom. Can't make out who's there in the back in third place, but OC3 is watching their lead dwindle a little bit here on this final stretch back into the outdoor stadium. I do like the switching that OC3 is doing. That, I think that's brilliant. But they got to remember that they have freedom in the back that are starting to have a slight jog. The reason they have that jog is because everyone's on that cart. Lighten that load by putting all four people on there instead of splitting between three. And it looks like Mayhem Freedom, they're rotating a little bit as well, but everyone continues to work. Exactly. Everyone's working the whole time, so it keeps that load light. If you have someone just, we have three people we're doing all this load. Why only have three when you have four people to do the work? And Joe Persanti was resting there now, and he will swap in as Taylor Williamson takes a break. But Taylor Williamson just keeping her hands on that card, just trying to help out as she looks to rest up for this final sandbag drag as OC3 continues to lead, but Mayhem Freedom is creeping up.
Brissanti and Luke Schaefer will pull now as Nistler takes a break. And now Nistler jogging alongside Taylor Williamson. And there goes Mayhem Freedom behind them as they just round the corner. But still a sizable lead for OC3. But Mayhem's done a pretty good job of cutting into that and putting themselves solidly in second place. Now remember, Mayhem Freedom has already earned an invite to the CrossFit Games. They're playing with house money right now. And we've seen Rich there most of the time doing exactly what he does. He, he's the leader of the team. He's the, the top guy of that team. Put him in the middle and everyone else rotates around. But again, everyone's doing work. So we have three pooling. We got one pushing from the back. That load is being shared. And there's no point where one athlete's coming off. And that's not just the fact that it's a team aspect. It's the smart aspect. Lighten the load for every member. Because once we get off the field here, we still have work that we got to do on the field. There's still rope climbs to be done. There's still sandbags that have to be pulled. Persanti, Schaefer, and Williamson now on the cart for OC3 as they took a look behind them a couple seconds ago to see where Mayhem Freedom currently sits. They still have a lead, and they will be the first back into the outdoor stadium. They will unload those bags, and then they will have to drag them down the field across the finish line in order to finish the event. Here comes Mayhem Freedom, solidly in second place. Card is down, 75 pound bags and 125 pound bags. OC3 unloading their sandbags. And now they have to drag them across the finish line. And here comes Mayhem Freedom. And now the drag begins by any means necessary. You've got to get that thing across the finish line. And it looks like OC3 is going to take the opening event here of the 2019 Rogue Invitational. They have to get all four of their athletes across the finish line. It's the last athlete that matters here is China Cho is first up for Mayhem Freedom. Persanti is across an OC3, 100 points, and the event win in Go Ruck. Oh my goodness. Mayhem Freedom will take Ooh. second. More teams now starting to find their way back inside the stadium here. Two teams are done. OC3 will win. Mayhem Freedom will take 90 points and finish in second place. CrossFit Balance, they are in the white tops. They are now in third place, looking to lock up 80 points. Mayhem Independence, they are now back on the field and here comes CrossFit 417 as well but that's CrossFit balance as they look to lock up third place here and 80 points in the overall standings another team that's looking to earn that invite here for the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games and now Mayhem Independence they are on the bags quickly trying to catch up with balance doesn't look like that will happen Mayhem Independence will take fourth Four one seven. Jared Stevens, he is on the bag, along with Christine Colbrander. Stevens in front, Colbrander behind her, him, and then here comes Bailey Ray and then Tyler Christoffel, someone we saw compete as an individual at the Mid-Atlantic CrossFit Challenge, now on a team. And they are across. And they will take. Fifth in the event. Three teams are left. Invictus Back Bay is they are making their way across the finish line. Don't stop and Team Ramwa. Good race between Travis Williams and Tolomar Aquino there between Don't Stop Misfit and CrossFit Invictus Back Bay. Don't Stop's going to win that by a second. They will take sixth. Invictus Back Bay will take seventh. And Invictus Back Bay edging out this team, Team Romwad. They will be the eighth and final team to come across the finish line. And the opening event of the 2019 Rogue Invitational is done, and it's OC3 
with the victory and 100 points as they go wire to wire. And that was just super impressive. And here's one of the things I was really curious about OC3 and how they were going to finish was they were third at the games last year. So they were on the podium with Mayhem Freedom. I think that they know that Mayhem Freedom is already, you know, they've already punched their ticket. They're already going. These guys want to get back there. They need to do well here. And what a great way for them to start. What a great way for them to start it off. So OC3, for most of the event, they were just using three people on that card. It worked out very well for them. They were good in their communication and really executed those three Cs that you were talking about. Well, and, you know, there's not, like we said, there's no right or wrong way. You just want to be as efficient as possible, but you have to make your plan and then be confident with your plan. That's what they did, even though I still think that if they would have had all four characters on that card working at the same time, they would have been even further ahead of the rest of the group. But I like the fact that they had good, great communication and they never wavered in what they were doing. They didn't, they didn't look around to see what everyone else was doing. They stayed true to their plan. They were very confident about their plan and they drove for it. And, and you know what, like I said, they want to qualify. And what a great way to start off by going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the champs and starting off with a win. That's a great start for the day and for the weekend for these guys. Mayhem Freedom would lock up second place as OC3 starts her weekend off well with 100 points and the event win as they come in at 18.01. CrossFit Mayhem Independence as two teams from Mayhem in the top three. CrossFit Balance finishes in fourth place. Rory McKernan is with your event winners, CrossFit OC3. Yeah, Sean, I've got OC3 here and an amazing finish. Wire to wire, you guys led the thing. And this was a very unique test. What, what made you guys so successful? Have you had an event like this in the past or in training? Uh, we've done a lot of stuff that, you know, just pushes you to your limit and you have no idea what you're about to do. So this kind of fell in that realm, but something completely different from what we've done before. It's cool. Okay, a great way to start. So third place team last year. Do you like the rest of the events for the weekend as well? Have to. That's what we got. So just, just run with it. So it's this, this or nothing, huh? Yep, exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right, congratulations. You're leading, the, uh, you're leading after one event, 100 points. Team OC3, ladies and gentlemen. OC3 will take the opening event of the 2019 Rogue Invitational Team Competition. And we are just getting started here on day one as the individuals are coming up next and they will take on Go Ruck. We'll be back with more from Columbus, Ohio and the 2019 Rogue Invitational. Quick break, individuals coming up next. The 2019 Rogue Invitational is presented by Reebok. Reebok's newest Sport the Unexpected campaign celebrates those who defy convention and challenge the status quo. Visit Reebok.com to shop the latest collection. And by Rogue, strength and conditioning equipment that's built to last. One event down for the teams. The individuals are coming up next. The men's will kick things off here in their opening event, Go Ruck. Now, Bill, more than half of this field has already qualified for the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games. And for the men who are heading to Madison, this is probably the best tune-up they're going to get before they get to Wisconsin. You know, we used to talk about the off-season, trying to test your training, see where you are. If you wanted to put together a dream testing scenario, let's put the best in the world in your field. And that's exactly what this is. We have the last two heats of the games competing on your first event right now. And you mentioned the best in the world. In the past three years, that man has been Matt Fraser. This is the first time we're going to see him in a competition since last year. And he has done exactly what Matt does. He comes out in Dubai, just smashes the field there, and then in his quote-unquote resting time, he goes and wins the World Wide Open. So I tell you what, the offseason for him has been amazing. And if you want to put yourself next to the best, he is the best. And the man that many people think might have a chance of dethroning him is Pat Velder. Now, one of the things I love about Pat is his nonchalant excellence. He's just so good. He doesn't ever seem worried, but I love the fact that finally there's someone out there that isn't running for second place. He's gunning for Matt, and I'm really excited to see him 
really step up there and fight for it. I want to see him fight for it. Ben Smith is still atop the podium at the CrossFit Games, but he has yet to qualify for another trip back to Madison, Wisconsin. He's looking to punch his ticket here. And this is the best opportunity he has to do that. All he really has to do is beat seven people. And so, you know, he didn't really go all that crazy in the open. Did his thing here, and uh, he's got his best shot here. Let's send it down to Rory McKernan on the field with more on the 2015 Fittest Man on Earth. Bill, you mentioned the World Wide Open. That's how many of Ben Smith's competitors got their qualification to the CrossFit Games. Ben this year, 4,765th in the world. Before this year, the worst he had done was 65th. When I talked to him about that backstage, he said, well, I got a later start than everyone else. And what he's referencing is a surgery that he chose to undergo in late January, right before the World Wide Open. He kind of chuckled and he said, I'm not putting too much pressure on myself here because I got a later start than these guys. But this event with a ruck on his back climbing ropes and running will be a great indication of what kind of form Ben Smith is back to. Thank you, Ro. Ben Smith taking the field along with the rest of the competitors. Just one heat for the men. An individual go ruck, 22 minute time cap and Ro mentioned it. They got to do all this work wearing that 30 pound pack. And again, we you know all these athletes have done weighted stuff and I swear I think half these guys spend all their training wearing a vest anyway. But it's, a, it's an addition, and they have to really be able to undertake that. We talked about how you wear it. You wear it up higher on your shoulders, so it's a little, it's just different. And it's hard to adjust under that difference, but it's going to be fun to watch. Let's take a look at the lane assignments for the opening event for the men of the 2019 Rogue Invitational. We're kind of seeing a little rematch between two guys who did a similar event at the games. That's Lucas Hogberg and Cole Sager. And I love the fact that with Cole Sager, what he did, you know, we weren't really expecting anything real spectacular in that battleground event that we saw in the games last year. And he was the only one that did his own event. He carried the bag, or the, the dummy different, and he didn't worry about anyone else. I want to see if he has this same setup here where he runs his race, he has his plan, he does his things, and keeps him up in the front. Now those, those two athletes that you talked about, we talked about Cole, we talked about uh, uh, Hoberg, Hoberg, they battled the entire time. So I'm expecting to see those guys out to the front and to see just what they can do. Three row climbs as Rasmus Anderson works his way up the rope. Now he has already qualified to the games, but on a team, has yet to earn an individual invitation. As Lucas Hogberg works his way up, and he is another man who has already qualified for the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games, finishing 21st in the World Wide Open. And now the majority of the field is done with those three rope climbs, and they will start on their run, where they will have to put those sandbags up on that hay shelf that we saw the teams have to deal with earlier this morning. Now, just like in the battleground event at the games last year, I think that the important part that you can't overlook is this keys, is the keys to this particular event is this run. You have that half mile or so out and the half mile or so back. You have to pace, or you gotta push the run. You don't pace the run like you would normally think you would because this is the longest time frame on this particular event. So you have to push that as much as possible. The other part is being flexible. This, this pack on your back is gonna feel different. The sandbags that you're gonna have to carry are gonna feel different. So you gotta be able to adjust on the fly and not get frustrated. That's what's really gonna be important in this event. Chandler Smith is out front. He is one of the men in the field here who has yet to earn an invitation to the CrossFit Games. He finished 42nd in the World Wide Open. He has never been to the CrossFit Games and made one regionals appearance as a memorable one back in, in 2016. Behind him, Pat Vellner and Lucas Hoberg in the black shirt. Those are your top three athletes. And those four, those four or five athletes right in the front, minus Chandler, they were the exact people that finished in that battleground event last year. We had Cole up in the front, and then that battle between Matt, Pat, and Lucas, all, you know, just within five seconds of each other finishing. The difference, let me mean, think about what it was, we had two people that fell off that cargo net with Matt and Pat, Lucas didn't. So it's gonna be really fun to see if that really affected you know, much of the uh, of the result, or if it will affect much of the result here. Lucas Hoberg had a fantastic cross the games last year. He was in the top five pretty much the in entire everything. competition. And right now he leads Chandler Smith 
It's about a half mile run to that hay shelf, and they have five sandbags they got to load up and over that shelf that we, again, saw the teams have to deal with earlier in their opening event. Lucas Hogwart now opening up a bit of a lead on Chandler Smith. Look at, the, look at the way he's running. Very comfortable. Doesn't even look like he's wearing a bag at all. You see some of the other athletes, they look like they're kind of struggling or they're trying to pace and, and deal with that. Lucas doesn't even look like he's dealing with it at all. It doesn't look like he has a pack on his back. You see some of the other strides up at the top, they look a little bit more, I don't want to say labored, but they're very, they're thinking about it. They're, they're, they're feeling that weight. Lucas doesn't look like that at all. Lucas Hober looking solid here as he is left Chandler Smith and Pat Vellner behind him, but Chandler Smith is, it's early, but he is way ahead of all the other men who have yet to earn an invite to the CrossFit Games. If he can stay towards the top of these events, he's probably going to earn himself a trip to Madison, but again, a lot of work needs to be done between today and the end of this competition, well, but early on, a good start. Well, then let's look at what that event is. We have, we have an Army guy doing a ruck event. I mean, this is tailor-made for him, so he should be up in the front. This should be very well in his wheelhouse. He should feel very comfortable. And, you know, we talked about being able to line yourself up next to some of the best in the world to use them as, as your rabbits, your race rabbits. And he's a great position. Noah Olson working on his sandbags. Willie George on the left of your screen. Pat Vellner. And Lucas Hoberg, who got to those first. Travis Mayer is in the gray next to him. 200 pounds on each of those sandbags, and they have to put five of them up and over that shelf. And again, we have to remember, you guys, it's not just that 200-pound bag. It's that 30-pound pack on top of you as at the same time that you're moving that. So as you're lifting it up off the ground, it's not just 200. It's 230 pounds, plus it's just in weird positions. And Lucas Hoberg is done first. And there goes Pat Vellner right behind him. And now Matt Fraser is done. It's Hogberg, Vellner, and Fraser, and then Cole Sager on the far right of your screen now in fourth place. And all four of these men have already qualified for the CrossFit Games, but as we mentioned earlier, great time for them to see where they are totally. with just a couple of months to go before we get to Madison. You know, we talked about with Matt Fraser, what was what was that one turning point that made him believe that he could be rich and be the absolute best? And we just in discussion, we talked about that that open event where we had Ben, Rich and Matt all competing and Matt won that. This may be this event right here. Look at where look where Pat is right behind Lucas, right up at the front. Beating Matt here would be, uh, again, a very good start for Pat because Pat usually in, event, in, in competitions likes to start off in last place and then come all the way up and end up a second behind Matt. Lucas Hogue out front early. And because these guys are kind of playing with house money, they're already going to the games. Perhaps you could be a little bit more reckless if Velder you want. can yeah. be a little more aggressive here. Now, Hogberg has picked up his drag bag that he's got to carry back into the stadium. And now he's being called back by his judges. He picked up the wrong bag. Uh, so that's going to cost him some time here. And we went from a 75-pound bag to a 125-pound bag. So not only is it going to like, oh, I lost my time and I have to reset my brain. Now it's heavier and it's going to feel extra heavy. 125 pounds on the bag in Hoburg. That's his bag that was on the bottom left that just left your screen. He picked that one up first and had to get called back. Scott Panjic, he's in the blue shorts, working his way to that bag. They have to carry that into the stadium, and then they have to drag it to the finish line. And if you go way back, remember the old school bird and run? Look at, look at how these guys are carrying these bags. That's the same thing we saw on the bird and run where they had to carry that log back into the stadium in California. You're going to see some, variance, some varying degrees of how to do it. So we see Pat, uh, Pat Vilner there in the blonde hair. We got it across the shoulders. Same thing with Chandler. Got it on one side of the head on, uh, with Lucas Hogberg kind of resting on his back, trying to keep his arms up so he can breathe. I think that's a great movement. We saw most of the guys in the burden run doing the exact same setup. It's Hogberg on the left. He is slightly ahead of Matt Fraser. So despite the mix-up and picking up the bag, Lucas Hogberg still has the lead. But remember, he's got to get back inside the outdoor stadium here and then drag that 125-pound bag across the field and to the finish line as Matt Fraser sits in second place. God, Matt looks so comfortable with that bag on his shoulders. 
And I, even though I, I think that we've seen a lot of success in the burden run, the way Lucas is carrying it, he just doesn't look very comfortable. <laughs> like where his head is, and that's going to kind of adjust the way that he's breathing. But I do like the way that he doesn't look like he's struggling, at least on his legs. He's moving nice and smooth. He doesn't look like he's having a hard time breathing because his arms are up, so it's really opening up his chest. So you take the face out of it, and I think he's doing all right. The majority of the field looks like they're copying Matt Fraser and Pat Vellner as they had that 125-pound bag resting across their shoulders. Approaching the nine-minute mark here of the opening event, the first of eight events that the individuals will do over these two days, the first of four they will do here on Saturday. A busy day for them and a busy weekend as someone looks to learn, earn an invitation the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games. These two on your screen already going. Lucas Hogberg on the bottom right. He is your leader in this event. Matt Fraser behind him, and it is Pat Vellner on the far left of your screen, followed by Cole Sager. Now with Lucas, you can see it looks like he's starting to struggle with that bag. He's actually starting to bounce down his back a little bit. He's starting to fight it, whereas Matt looks very comfortable. And the one plus with having it across the shoulders, you can alternate from one side to the other side, giving your arms a rest. If that bag comes down with Lucas, that's going to be a, that's going to be a frustrating drop. And we mentioned how deep this field is. This is your CrossFit Games podium from last year, just in a different <laughs> order right now. <laughs> yep. Lucas Hogan getting oh. closer to making his way back in, and now that bag's starting to slip down his back as Matt Fraser still has a solid hold right behind him. He just doesn't have any handles, anything to hold on to. Matt looks extremely comfortable with that bag across his shoulders. Looking like it's going to come down to the drag. But remember, they have to go back to their lanes. Oh. Now Hogberg having a little bit of trouble navigating his way around the corner. Fraser readjusting the bag as well. So Hogberg does not surrender any ground. And now the bag is down for Hogberg, and Fraser's going to pass him. Oh, my gosh. That's not where you want to have that drop. Ah. Now Fraser drops it. And Hogberg choosing to hug it and just get it in the stadium however he can and here comes Matt Fraser in the lead back to his lane bag is down and now he has to drag it across the field and to the finish line Cole Sager and Pat Velder back inside the outdoor stadium as well as is Noah Olson and there goes Matt Fraser Cole Sager has now passed Lucas Holberg Velner threatening to pass Hogberg as well. Fraser is going to win the event. He'll lock up 100 points. Cole Sager will take second. Ooh. Pat Velner passing Lucas Hogberg for third and 80 points. And now Hogberg will take fourth. Wow. Noah Olsen coming across. He looks to lock up fifth place in the event. And right next to him is Travis Mayer. Street Horner now across the finish line. Chandler Smith coming in as well. The Street Horner also has already qualified for the game. So your top non-qualifier right now is Chandler Smith. And here comes Willie George, the national champion from France out of the World Wide Open. Had an impressive debut at the CrossFit Games last year, finished inside the top 10. Rasmus Anderson is also on the bag as well, as George closes out his event. So ben Smith and Scott Panchik. Smith is on the right, Panchik is on the left. Panchik is going to pass Ben Smith. And Panchik will get across the finish line ahead of Ben Smith. So good news for Chandler Smith, who had a couple men come between him and Ben Smith, two of the guys who were both fighting for that invite from the 2019 Rogue Invitational to the CrossFit Games. More men starting to come across the finish line here as Colton Mertens is done. Merton's looking to make his first trip as an individual to the CrossFit Games. In 2018, he was there as a member of CrossFit Kilo's team. They finished 19th as Matt Fraser continues to catch his breath. Now, Casper Gamelmark is making his way back inside 
the outdoor stadium. Gamble Mark, another man looking to make his first trip to the CrossFit Games, and he will be doing that as he is already qualified after finishing 24th in the World Wide Open. Man who has made multiple regional appearances, but this year will be his first trip to the big dance in Madison, Wisconsin. Now, Adrian Moonweiler, the guy who did very well last year at the CrossFit Games, winning the opening event, the bike event. He is lugging that thing closer to the finish line as we are approaching the 14 minute mark of the opening event. Gamble Mark has come across the finish line, and now Moonweiler is in as well. That's Gamelmark who is in, and we still have more men on the course, and all the guys who are out there are guys who are looking to earn the invite from this event. Jake Berman, he's on the left of your screen. Dylan Martin just came in. Cole Sager is out to cheer on Dylan Martin. The bottom left of your screen. So now Dylan Martin is in. He is another man trying to earn an invite to the CrossFit Games as he finished 63rd in the World Wide Open. Three-time regionals athlete. And, and as much as these guys are struggling in the back, one of the, for us, the people watching, the guys in the front made it look so easy. Oh, it's 125 pounds, throw it on your back, go ahead and run a half mile, no big deal. <laughs> this, these guys all qualified they only took 10 qualifiers for this event. So, I mean, you had to compete against all the people in the world that tried to even get into this event. They made it, and look how hard that looks. That, that right there is what 125 pounds feels like on top of the 30-pound vest, on top of all the other stuff. That's reality, and I think that's important for us to see is these guys right here that are coming in are still amazing athletes. They will blow doors on the vast majority of the people that are out there. And you come here, and it looks like, wow, that's... That's a, they must have the heavy bag. <laughs> As I have said before, you, you don't know how good you have to be just to suck at the CrossFit Games. And Jake Berman is the man on the upper right of your screen. In the bottom left is Matt Fraser, and he is the winner of this event as he locks up 100 points. Again, the scoring a little bit different as there is a 10-point gap between the top three. So first place gets 100, second place gets 90. Third place gets 80, and then that gap shrinks as we work our way down the standings. Is now Jake Berman, four-time regional athlete. He was 16th at the Atlantic Regional as an individual in 2017. That's his best finish. Jake Berman dragging his bag at the bottom of your screen. And he will get across. Maybe that was Jake Fry who just came in. And that'll do it for the opening event. And once again, Matt Fraser with an event win. 100 points. And he was able to take the lead at the very end of the event, as it was Lucas Hoberg who looked like he was shot out of a cannon here. Well, and I really thought this was a replay of last year's Battleground event. It's exactly what it looked like. Same sort of techniques with the rope climbs, and we got packs on these guys. And the same people came out to the front, and just as expected, I was thinking that Lucas would be out there. Now that 30-pound ruck pack is 
different than the weighted vest, but it didn't look like it affected Lucas at all. He looked so smooth on that run. Got to those sandbags, but then all of a sudden grabbed the wrong one. And this was detrimental because not only did he lose that distance, but now mentally he had to re hit that reshift. So he saw everyone else grabbing their bag. He had to go from a light bag to a heavy bag. That's a mental flux as well. He carried it on his back that particular way. You can see it draped across uh, his back where his mats and the other guys went straight across the shoulders. And even though I thought that was a good movement, it was really it was really affecting his back. So he dropped it early. Matt made that pass. And I think Matt dropped the bag too just because he thought that's where they had to put it down. I think that's more what it, more what it was. But they got to the field. Matt just took off, did his thing. But then all of a sudden, Cole Sager, just like the Battleground event last year, was right on Matt's tail. Great finish, same thing for Pat Vellner. It's basically a photo finish for the people that we had last year. Shuffle them around a little bit, but an amazing race. But give me a break, come on, Matt, wow. Send it down to Roy McKernan, who was with Matt Fraser. All right, Matt Fraser, there was some communication, actually a thank you from Lucas Hoberg there. There was a lot of confusion there early in the race and then a little bit later as well, but what was he thanking you for? Uh, you know, all the big sandbags were lined up and 50 pounders were at the end, so he, Veldner, and I all went and grabbed one of those and started running. We got called back, but Lucas is too far ahead to hear the guy, so we got him back. So you gave him a little heads up. That was, that was courteous. What about later in the race when it looked like there was a little bit of bumping and, and, and uh, racing? Any, uh, any words exchanged then? No, we, you know, we, we, never, we never bumped up, but uh, I saw Lucas, his bag slipped off his shoulder. I went, oh, good. And then mine slipped off my shoulder. So I was like, all right, here we go. It's a good race. All right, you were already pre-qualified for the CrossFit game, so what is the significance of this event, the Rogue Invitational, for you? Uh, you know, I'm just here for fun. You know, we were able to drive up, so it's easy travel. And uh, the reception, Denny, you know, I'm catching up with 100 friends I haven't seen all year, so it's just a lot of fun. All right, well, congratulations on a win on the first event. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Fraser. It's always fun when you're winning. <laughs> always. <laughs> Three-time fittest man on earth, Matt Fraser, doing what he does, gets the event win. The men are done. We'll have the women coming up next. Stay with us here at the 2019 Rogue Invitational. Day one of the 2019 Rogue Invitational continues here in Columbus, Ohio, just outside of the Rogue headquarters. Beautiful day here. Thanks for being with us, everybody. The women are up next. I'm Sean Woodland with Bill Grundler. First look that we're gonna get at this loaded field and Tia Toomey looks to continue her quest to become the first woman to ever win three CrossFit Games championships. And she just, I mean, talk about a training facility. She works out with Matt. She's out here, you know, at Mayhem Freedom with Rich. Best situation, and she's already so good. So again, this is gonna be a great time to see where she is, see where her testing is. This woman, Laura Horvath last year, had such a debut that was out of nowhere. Now the question is, can she continue that here in 2019? And I really think she had kind of a rough start to the beginning of her year. She had a rough time in Dubai, didn't necessarily do spectacular out of the open, but she looks much better now. I've seen her training, I've seen what she's put up on social media. And the thing is, she's young and she is very, very hot and fiery. And Catherine Davis' daughter wants to get herself back to the podium. She wants to become the first woman to win three CrossFit Games championships. And she's been pushing hard. Again, seeing what she's been doing on her training, knowing what she has here today, knowing that she's here at Rogue with the best of the best, best training uh, 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 chance to see where she is, if she's ready, she's fired up as well. And there is Catherine David's daughter who was on the podium last year, finishing third. Has already qualified for the 2019 Reebok CrossFit Games. And as you heard Bill say, though, this is a very good opportunity to see where she stands, which has a couple of months left to go before we get to Madison, Wisconsin. But this is the test at hand. Go Ruck. And again, the women doing all this work with that 20-pound Ruck pack. And I think, you know, for the athletes that were in the games last year that did the Battleground uh, uh, event, it's very similar to that. So it's a great way to start this off. We have a lot of work. We have to see if they can handle the, the, the objects like the men did. Again, a little bit different pack. That's something they have to contend with. Rope climbs are going to be a deal. And then the, the carrying that heavy sandbag. That's what, that's what we saw was the big switch for the men. We're going to see if it's going to be the same way with the guys or with the ladies. 
All 20 women at this competition will be in this first and only heat. And in lane nine is Laura Horvath. And we talked about the men in the battleground event. She won that event last year at the games. This could be one where she makes a statement. And she handled the event last year. And the thing is, she looked she was having fun. You could just see it in her face. I want to see if we have that same sort of thing happening now. Um, looks very focused there. She usually is just very joyful about kind of being in the moment and just like, I just love doing it whether she wins or doesn't win. Um, she needs this to start it off since she's had kind of a rough beginning. She needs this event. First of eight events for the women is underway and we begin with three rope climbs wearing that 20 pound ruck pack. That's Katie Trombetta, closest to the camera, getting to work on her first rope climb. She has already qualified for the CrossFit Games after finishing 28th in the World Wide Open. Brooke Haas, she's another woman who will be going to the CrossFit Games for the first time in her career. Out of Crucible CrossFit in Jacksonville, Florida, 18th overall in the World Wide Open. And there is Annie Thoris' daughter, another woman who was in that conversation to become the first to ever win three CrossFit Games championships on the women's side. And, and you know, here we are. We have the Legends event coming up. She, sh she could be, should be in that event as well. The, the career that she's had, being able to be on the competitive floor with all the Legends that are out there competing today is pretty impressive. And she's still here just, just going crazy on these events. It's amazing. Well, Tia Toomey and Laura Horvath are both done with their rope climbs. Horvath is in the all black and Tia Toomey is right behind her. And there goes Annie Thoris' daughter. Sarah Sigma's daughter is off. Catherine David's daughter as well. So most of the field here finishing up. We saw Kristen Holt as well. What are your keys to this event? Well, I think just like with the men, the, the largest amount of time is going to be on the run. The run out to get the sandbag and that run back in. So you really need to push that run. It's going to be important to not rest in this particular area. Now you can on the other parts, you just have to be very smart about it. Now the other parts being very flexible. You have that odd pack on your back. It's a weighted vest. No, it's not the same as the normal weighted vest puts it in the back, and then you're going to have to carry that sandbag on that run. We saw what it did with the guys. These ladies have to be the same thing. Be flexible, be, you know, be able to adapt on, on the fly, and then just keep moving. Tia Toomey is in the lead. That is Catherine David's daughter. And now we have some athletes who are back inside the stadium, still struggling just on the rope climbs. But the majority of the field, as 18 of the 20 women here, are now on the run. And Colleen Lahane is on the bottom right. She is out of the same gym as Brooke Haas. And she's in those long purple pants. And both of these women now are stuck on their rope climbs as Tia Toomey leads the field to the sandbag to shelf portion of this event. Annie Thorstad is right behind her, followed by Laura Horvath and Sarah Sigma's daughter. So down that lower box, you can see Katie Trombetta shaking out her oh, arms. Like we saw her work her way up that rope and actually slid down. She was literally a hand's length away, a hand's thickness away from, from touching that top buckle and had to slide down. Ah, terrible to see that. These are your leaders as Tia Toomey out front. The Australia national champion out of the world wide open. Two time defending CrossFit Games champion. And she has never finished lower than second at the CrossFit Games. <laughs> kind of good. She's kind of all right. And again, we talked about with Lucas Hogberg who looked comfortable on the run. Look at these ladies. They look amazing on this run. I don't see anyone holding on to the pack like they're trying to stabilize that pack. They all look very comfortable, nice, decent strides. They don't look like they're fighting the run, being able to use the gravity as they're going downhill. They just need to make sure that they compose themselves enough that, there aren't, that they aren't re you know, really revving that, that heart rate up too high because when they get that sandbag on their shoulders, it is gonna be a different, they still need to push the tempo but it is going to feel extremely different with that bag on top of the shoulder and across their neck. They will have to move five sandbags up to and over that hay bale shelf. 
Tia Toomey continues to lead. We approach the four and a half minute mark and Toomey onto the sandbags. 100 pounds, five bags that they have to move up and over. And again, you can see these ladies aren't having any issue at all with that 100 pound. Look at that, just whipping those things up. Laura right in the middle there, tossing those bags up and over quickly. Brooke Wells is there as well. She's closest to the camera. Christy Aramo, she's in the purple shirt, who has qualified for the CrossFit Games, but has said that she is not going to go. This will be her final event of the season as Tia Toomey continues to lead. Sarah Sigmund's daughter now in second place. Tia Toomey, Sarah Sigma's daughter, Catherine Davis' daughter, and Annie Thoris' daughter. So it's an Australian and three Icelandic women leading the pack, and we are very used to seeing that. <laughs> Look at that. Not even a break in Tia's stride. And she's actually really extending that distance on Sarah. Just really very confident on the run, very composed on that run. But I'm, I'm really excited to see Sarah right behind her in that second place position. She's had tell you what, after last year and seeing the struggles that she was having, she needed to have that confidence back and, and watching her over some of these other sanctioned events that she's been in, she's looked much more confident, much more happy about what she's doing with her training. Um, and, and it's just great to see her really pushing the tempo. Tia Toomey will pick up that drag bag, 75 pounds, has to carry it inside the outdoor stadium here and then drag it across the finish line and going with the same technique that we saw Matt Fraser employ during the men's event. Now what I like that Matt did is he went from the single shoulder, you see how most of these ladies are kind of putting it up there, and then was able to switch it from that to across, the, you know, to straight across both shoulders. So you, he, she, he had a little bit of mobility to be able to switch that around. The athletes that just go straight to the back and are carrying it on the back, they're the ones that, like Lucas did, you know, struggle. So we see Tia right there in the front, using it straight across the uh, both shoulders. Sarah right behind her, going for the opting for the one side. Not straight to the back, but on the one side. Which is good, because she'll be able to move that if she needs to get and get tired on that one side. Sarah Sigmund's daughter looking for a little redemption this year, and she's looked good so far when we've seen her at some of the sanctioned events. Also, winning the World Wide Open. She had to withdraw from the games last year. You know she would love to build her confidence with a strong finish here at this event. Well, and I think that, you know, she really runs well off of momentum. You, know, you get her going in the right direction, and she's really hard to stop. Uh, as long as she can stay in there, she's going to do just fine. Just fine. But meanwhile, Colleen Lahane is in the bottom right of your screen, and she has yet to complete her three rope climbs. She was one of the women who qualified through the online qualifier to this event, and she's just hit a wall here. Well, one of the things like with rope climbs or any other gymnastics type of event, once, you, once you've once you hit that limit and you just hit attempt, 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 and you're not making it, you're doing a whole lot of extra work and not getting anything for it. And it's hard. You have to, at some point, just stop and let yourself over recover before you can get in there. But not only is it physically stressful, it's mentally stressful. Let's go down to the field to Rory McKernan. Sean, one thing that we've seen in CrossFit competition, and it holds true here, every time that Colleen Lehane makes an attempt at the rope, this stadium absolutely explodes. So the, uh, the fans here in the stadium cheering just as loudly for the last place person as they are for the first, and it looks like she's taking another attempt here in just a second. Colleen Lehane is going to make another attempt on this rope as Tia Toomey is almost back inside the outdoor stadium here. She is followed by Sarah Sigmund's daughter. Sigmund's daughter is in the white top, and then it's Annie Thoros' daughter in that peach top behind Sigmund's daughters. Laura Horvath has moved herself into second place. She was drafting, I guess, off Tooby. Didn't quite see her back there. And Laura Horvath now threatening to pass Tooby as Colleen Lahane is just trying to get this rep done on the bottom right of your screen. And if she gets to the top, you're going to hear probably the loudest cheer that you've heard today so far. Lahane has got to touch that shackle. She does, and that rep will count for Colleen Lahane, but it might not because she did not 
technically show control all the way down the rope, and it looks like they might let her slide on that one, and now she's off on, her <laughs> off on the run. And here comes Laurel Horvath back inside the stadium. So Horvath has now overtaken Toomey for the lead, but remember, they have to go back to the... Sorry, that's Kristen Holta in the All Black. She and Laurel Horvath were wearing the same thing, so Kristen Holta kind of out of nowhere. Well, Kristen was second in that event last year, right behind Laura. So this is a great, this is a great movement for her. Tia Toomey right on the bag, and she's going to leave Holta behind her. Now, both these women have already qualified for the game, so it's about prize money and confidence for these two. Sarah Sigmund's daughter's on the bag as well. She's at the top of your screen in the all-white. Tia Toomey's going to win the event. Kristen Holta's going to take second. Sarah Sigmund's daughter looking to lock up third, and here comes Annie Thoris' daughter. These are the only four women right now on the bag drag. Is now Laurel Horvath is back inside the stadium, and Horvath is on the drag, and she looks to lock up fifth place in the event. And Horvath actually might get fourth because she's chewing up ground and might catch Annie Thoris' daughter. <laughs> wow. This one's going to be close. <laughs> So it's Thoris Doddard by a second. And now Brooke Wells is inside. We have yet to see a woman who's trying to earn an invite to the CrossFit Games get back inside the outdoor stadium here. And I think this is okay. Brooke is taking a little bit of a break. There's no one to race. And everyone that's competing is in this heat. So you know exactly where you stand. She doesn't have to fight anybody, so just get across whenever you want to get across. Plenty of time to rest. Natia Toomey congratulating Brooke Wells as she comes across the finish line. And now Christy Aramo. So Aramo making her way to the finish line. And she will get seventh place in this event. And now Katrin David's daughter is the only woman right now on the bag pull. And that's Danny Spiegel who is now coming in as Katrin David's daughter is on the bag pull. Spiegel getting right to work. Spiegel, another woman who was already qualified, trying to track down David's daughter. As Spiegel's across. Well, Holly Henderson now is across the finish line. So she is the first woman who has not earned an invite. Or make that Lauren Suver. Margot Alvarez is across. So Suver is the first woman who has not qualified for the CrossFit Games to get across the finish line. So right now, she is the leader in that race. <laughs> Lauren Suver finished 61st in the World Wide Open. She's never been to regionals before. And Carrie Pierce is coming across. Brooke Haas as well. She's on the left side of your screen. Two women who are already earned trips to the CrossFit Games, and Fee Sagafi is in. She's another woman who has already qualified after finishing 24th overall in the World Wide Open. <laughs> Approaching the 13 and a half minute mark here in the opening event for the women, the 2019 Rogue Invitational, Katie Trombetta is on the bag drag. That's Rachel Garibay as Annie Thoros' daughter and Catherine Davis' daughter talk things over. Here comes Katie Trombetta, 28th overall in the World Wide Open. will be making her first appearance at the CrossFit Games. Colleen Lahane has made her way to the bag carry. As she was struggling on those rope climbs, and now she's just looking to get inside the time cap here. And 
That looks to be Holly Henderson, the three-time regional athlete from Jackson, Mississippi. The best finish was 21st in 2014 at the South Central Regional. So she's across. Kareen Shrum is in. And that is actually Colleen Lahane, who has not done with the sandbag onto the shelf. We thought she was on the sandbag carry or the bag carry, but she's still working on those 100-pound sandbags. And look at the frustration. You, I mean, that's what those rope climbs did. It just took everything out of her. You know, these bags are not heavy for these women at all, but if you're going to do 20 almost attempts at rope climbs, at weighted rope climbs, you don't have any arms left. You if, can see her right there shaking her arms out. And if there's a silver lining for her right now is that the majority of the field that finished way ahead of her has already, they have already qualified yep. for the games. She is chasing the women who haven't qualified. So she can have one bad event. She's got to worry now about catching those other <laughs> women who are looking to earn that invite here. So not over yet for Colleen Lahane. Lauren Suver finished 10th in the event. And Suver is the top woman so far who has not earned an invite or qualified for the CrossFit Games to finish in this event. So 10th place for her, and she will be the leader in that other race that we're watching as far as the invite to the CrossFit Games is concerned. And in the bottom left, meanwhile, are the women who are going to be vying for the title of fittest on earth we expect <laughs> when they get to Madison, Wisconsin. A lot of a lot of hardware there on the bottom left. Yeah, it's a little bit of a, it's a packed square down there. It's a packed square. So Colleen Lahane is making her way to the sandbag that she will have to carry into the stadium. She's got plenty of time. There's a 22 minute time cap here. There is Lauren Suver, 61st in the World Wide Open, 10th in this event, and she will be the leader in the invite race. And the in there really is two races. We should just have a split screen the whole time. Two different races happen, <laughs> best in the world and the qualifying race. And that's the advantage of competing in an event like this where you have a loaded field, where more than half the field is already qualified. You don't have to win, you just got to beat everybody who hasn't already qualified. And it's it's weird because it's it's a when you have an event that's so stacked, it seems like that would be the most difficult one to, to qualify in because obviously you have the best of the best. But if everyone is already qualified, then now it's your best opportunity because you're really only competing in a field of like somewhere between five and seven people. So now you have the best chance ever with all the big names already taken out of it. I mean, if you look at across the board of all the sanctioned events, this is anyone's best shot to make it into into the uh, into the CrossFit Games. We saw the event results. Tia Toomey, the only woman to go sub 10 minutes, 958.06, the winning time for her. Take one more look at the way this thing started, and Toomey, like we saw with Lucas Hoberg, up front from the beginning, but was able to hang on to the lead. Yeah, you know, I mean, we, we talked about how this compared to the Battleground event, so I really expected Laura Horvath to come out in front right out of the get-go, which she did. Um, Tia did what she does always, which is it just kind of hung in there, knows her pace, knows how to race. But you can see how some of these ladies really struggle with that rope climb. It was no joke with that 20 pounds on their back. Tia out in the front, very confident, great tempo, did not look at all disturbed by that pack on the back. But neither did all these other ladies. So very, very strong field all the way through. Once they made their way out to the front, we saw some of these other ladies just struggling to get off that rope. I mean, I, 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 you're right, Sean. I'm surprised that that one even let go because there wasn't that control coming down. But after about 20 attempts, they're like, look, you did a lot of work. <laughs> we'll, we'll let you go on this one. But out in that front, we had Holta and Tia out there battling the whole time. We knew Holta was going to do well because she's got that great endurance background. She also was second in that battleground event last year, so we knew she was going to do spectacular. But Tia was out in the front and just held it out there and confident. Never once did she look around to see where anyone was, just did her thing, which was win the event. Holta did great. 
We knew that she, I mean, she's got a ton of experience in these kind of, these type of events she does well in, so I expected that. This and if great. you think back to last year, the Battleground event, this is where experience really comes into play. A lot of athletes were dragging that Rescue Randy backwards. They may have learned from that and know <laughs> that they could run forward with this bag, and that was the fastest way to do and it. And I didn't see anybody do it the old Rescue Randy way of, you know, walking backwards. But you can see just how bad that sandbag carry was. I mean, it wasn't just heavy. It was awkward. And it wasn't an awkward bar on your shoulders or like a yoke or anything like that. Look how wide that is. So you really can't get a comfortable position on your head. If you put it on one side, your head's, you know, knocked over, you know, all the way to the left and your head's kind of kinked. We saw Lucas Hobart, his chin's all down to his chest. He couldn't breathe. There was a lot of tension on his back. Um, but I think if you're able to handle that and move it around a little bit, use it on one side, let that side get tired, go to the other side and feel confident with it, it's okay. You get frustrated, then this is what starts to happen. You Nikki Matarazzo is on the bag, and she just dropped it. Uh, Matarazzo, a two-time regionals athlete, one appearance on a team, one as an individual. She was 26 last year at the East Regional. And she looks like she just wants to kick that bag right in the face. And I don't blame her. And you, you've talked about this before, but this is a regionals level athlete. She yeah. finished 28th last year. And Tia Toomey did this. It's taking her basically more than twice as long than Tia Toomey. I, I mean. That's perspective. That, <laughs> that's just how good Tia is. I mean, she's just an unreal athlete. Doesn't matter what you throw at her. Nikki Matarazzo with a minute to go before we hit the time cap is going to have to hustle to get herself across the finish line. She and Colleen Lahane are the only two women who are left. And Matarazzo looking to lock up 19th in this event. And again, this is not totally detrimental for these women. We still have seven events left, and they are only racing five other individuals who haven't qualified for the games. So keep that in mind. Matarazzo looking like she's going to run into the time cap because we just have less than 30 seconds to go. And Colleen Lahane as well will not finish this event. Ah. Matarazzo, 83rd overall in the World Wide Open. Two seconds to go, and that'll be the time cap for the opening event for the women. 18 of the 20 women in the field finish it. No one does it faster than the two-time defending fittest woman on earth, Tia Toomey. Well, Nikki Matarazzo is probably going to punt that go ruck sack right into the stands. <laughs> probably never wants to see that thing again. Go ruck, you can have your bag back. I don't want to play with your toys anymore. <laughs> But a great effort for her. She almost gets to the end. She and Colleen Lahane, the only two athletes who don't finish the opening event of the 2019 Rogue Invitational. It's Tia Toomey who locks up 100 points. She takes first. It's an all-European affair in the top five. Laura Horvath will finish in fifth. And then Brooke Wells, the top finishing American. Margot Alvarez comes in right behind Lauren Suver. Alvarez, another woman who has yet to qualify for the CrossFit Games. And Nikki Matarazzo and Colleen Lahane, the only two women who do not finish inside that 22-minute time cap. Let's go down to Rory McCurden, who is with Tia Toomey. All right, Tia, I was joking when I asked if this one was easy, but you said, yeah, in comparison to some other stuff, how, how does it match up with past events that you've competed in? Uh, I definitely think that this was um, a challenging workout, but nothing um, that, I guess, really, really pushed me because of the heat. Um, the crowd was amazing, and it was also the first workout of the day, so, you know, it was all good. <laughs> it was all good. You, you were having a laugh with Kristen Holter. What happened during the event? Well, she uh, took me over on one of the back straights there, and it just kind of reminisced from what a palooza and a few other workouts at the Games, and I was like, not this time, Kristen. <laughs> All right, well, you got her there at the end, and you've got some new neighbors. You have a training partner in Matt Fraser who won this event for the men. How has that affected your training? Uh, I think it's just had a huge positive on my training, and it's just been a breath of fresh air as well. I didn't think um, living over in Australia whoop, that I needed a new um, fresh start or anything, but Shane and I are absolutely loving living over in the States, and it's just been a really cool experience. It's been a cool experience for us to have you here. Ladies and gentlemen, Tia Toomey.
Tia Toomey, her performances have been legendary so far at the CrossFit Games. And this competition is about to get legendary in and of itself. The Legends Division is coming up next. And when you look at the combined resumes of the competitors that we have here, it is absolutely incredible what these athletes have done and how they have helped build this sport. You know, I, this is a CrossFit history lesson that's about to go down. Every name that you need to know is here. 13 of the 16 champions that we've ever had, and we're starting off with Miko Salo. This guy, when he came onto the scene, blew everyone's doors because they just saw this stoic machine crushing everything that he touched. He would do these crazy workouts out at his home gym, and he just looked ominous, and that's the best word I can say. 2009 champ, and then he's back again, and everyone's been waiting to see him. But then, again, let's bring the other 2009 chat. We, we decided to take her headphones away. Yeah, and our and broadcast And let her go down partner. to the field. Let her go down to the field and show what it's all about. I I'm excited to see Tanya out there. This is what she's done. She was the champ. She took off to be a mom. Then she came back and competed at a high level, the regional level, came back to be a mom, and now we get to see her compete again, and I am excited to see her go for it. And the legends are going to be taking on the same event as the individuals, but the change here is, is that they don't have to do the rope climbs with the ruck pack on. It is optional. I think most of them are going to exercise that option to not wear it. <laughs> I, you know what? I don't know. I think that I think that we'll see that because it's a pretty fast switch with that with that uh, ruck pack getting it on and off. I myself would like to take it off. But these guys are competitors. They don't like to take the easy way out. That's why they're that's why they're legends. So I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what they do. But it's been really fun to watch these guys be here and, and talk to each other. And uh, just, I want to see them throw down. This is what it's all about. Men and the women will be competing together. There's really nothing riding on this except prestige. Here where the men will line up. They will line up on one side of the field. The women will line up on the other. And in lane nine is a guy that we know can do some grunt work. We've seen him doing it in the past at the Cross the Games. That's Tommy Hackenbrook on the women's side of things. How did Sam Briggs get in here? Uh, she's qualified as an individual to the CrossFit Games. Well, well, she's already qualified to the Games like four other times. But, you know, you're a legend, and you deserve to be here. We are underway as Becca Voigt. We took a look at her. They head out to those three rope climbs. And we'll see who sheds the pack and who doesn't. It. Well, how about this? They're all keeping it I on. I told you. They're <laughs> legends. They're legends for a reason. This is what they do. It doesn't matter how old or how long they've been out of the game. This is what they do. And again, look at what these athletes are, are, are doing. We have these, the weight for these guys is the same. The work that they're doing is the same. It's amazing. But I got to look at guys like Dan Bailey. You know, we, we've seen him. He's such a, a, a crowd favorite. He's been one of the most consistent crossfitters that we've ever had competing, always in the top 10 when he was competing. Come off a lot of injuries and still does amazing stuff when you put it, when you put it down to it. Julie Fouché, amazing athlete. We saw her do, we saw her on the podium. We saw what she could do. We saw, we've seen her be the best of the best. Then we've also seen her blow her Achilles out and still finish workouts with the blown Achilles at the same time. I was to say, people remember Julie for what she's done at the games. It's incredible. But her most memorable moment was probably at that regional competition back in 2015. It where was amazing. She competed with a torn Achilles and in a boot. That's Becca Voigt. And let's just say that name one more time. Becca. There is no other Becca out there when it comes to CrossFit. Ten times. Ten times at the games. And, and look, she's still started qualified as a master. Yep. So this will be her 12th trip to the CrossFit Games. Amazing. She's made 10 as an individual, but she is not done as far as a pursuing, a pursuing a trip as an individual. She's going to go to some sanctions events later on and try to get back for the 11th time. Which is amazing. But same thing. The keys for these guys are going to be the same thing. We already have made it through the rope climb. Once you get through that, now it's about that run. You want to push the run because it's the longest part of this event. You can't waste energy you got to get going but you need to make sure that on that last run you're flexible enough to deal with the oddness of that big sandbag on your shoulder and that pack on your back so have some fun don't get frustrated just keep on moving Tanya Wagner is on the rope climbs as she looks to finish up her three and remember that pack is optional I know Tanya because of the pride kept that thing on 
And she's doing that legless, that, that windless uh, wrap with her leg. The, the nice thing about that is it's a very strong bite when you get it locked in. But the problem is what you saw Tanya do is she's having to kick that rope around. And when you're doing that, that puts a lot of tension on your arms, extra tension. And I think that was a smart move. You know what? Take the back, take that pack, that backpack off, that ruck pack off. Get up to the top of that rope and finish it. So Becca Voigt is out front, followed by Graham Holmberg right behind her, the 2010 CrossFit Games champion, and the only man to ever defeat Rich Froning in an individual event at the Games. You know, and I, I think that gets overlooked a lot. You know, they, they, they always kind of dismiss Graham in his championshipness, but yeah. you, you, whether whether that was the beginning of Rich's career or not, whether he didn't quote unquote know how to climb a rope at that point or not, it doesn't matter. He was the champ, and he had an amazing year, and he's always been in the game for so long. And what I love about the two leaders that we have in the front right now is you can't pick an event and say, oh, this is a Graham event or this is a Becca event. You've, it's never been that way with those athletes. They just are workhorses, and on the ones that take the work. That's where those two athletes succeed, and that's why they've been in the game for so long. Graham Holmberg, the only man to beat Rich Froning at the end of the competition to stand ahead Last of event. him. Yeah. On the podium. That was back in 2010 when he was crowned the fittest man on earth. Becca Voigt is behind him. We saw Jason Kalipa, the 2008 CrossFit Games champion. Dan Bailey up there as well. Graham Holmberg now ahead of. Becca Voigt Miller. And they will get to that sandbag to shelf. It's 200 pounds for the men and 100 pounds for the women. Now, if we look at this field, we got to remember that uh, some of these guys have been out of the game for a while. You know, we don't see them on the open. Maybe they've kind of messed around with the open or whatever, but they're not actively training. I will say that as an ex athlete, once someone says go, you're in competitive mode. So it's been interesting listening to these guys talking about how they're training and what they're doing for their training when they're coming here. They know that nothing's riding on this, but nobody likes to lose. And so it's like trying to find that balance between how do I train to have some fun? How do I train to do what I want to do? So I, I'm not going out there just to have fun. I want to do well. I want to be proud of what I'm doing. And Becca Void is a woman who really – I've always kind of referred to her as a gamer. She shows up at a competition, and you know, she may have not qualified in the highest spot, but right. when it's 3-2-1 go in front of a big crowd, she knows she how goes. to put her best foot forward, and she knows how to put her best performance out there, and that's why she's wound up in the game so many times. Yeah. Making her 12th appearance this year, she will be going as a master. Now the question is, can she earn an invite as an individual? Graham Holmberg is done. As he continues to lead for the men, and it's... Becca Voigt Miller, who is a leader for the women, and she is way ahead of Graham Holmberg. Now they did decrease the sandbags that the Masters had to throw. Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> that's that's great. That you guys program that. Uh, so a little bit lighter, a little bit less work for these athletes to get them up and over. But yeah, Becca had no problem. She's flopped those things over there quick. Becca Voigt said, when I talked to her a week ago, she said she's most proud of winning the Spirit of the Games Award in 2014. And she really does embody what you know, a CrossFit Games athlete should aspire to be. You know what? All these athletes want to win. Nobody wants to lose. But I think that for the athletes in the Legends division, we I mean, we consider them, they're the OGs. They're the original gangsters. They're, these are the ones that, like, there wasn't a bazillion dollars on the line to win. It was you just came out and you wanted to win for the sheer sake of winning. And so, yeah, I think the fact that she got the Spirit Award, the fact that she that she says that it's one of her private uh, uh, personal best, that's awesome. Samantha Briggs is now right behind Becca Voigt Miller as Tanya Wagner. You just saw her making her way out. And Graham Holmberg would be the first man to the sandbag. Here comes Jason Kalipa, and that looks like Dan Bailey behind him. Becca Voigt Miller to pass the seven minute mark here as your leader. And it's Sam Briggs in second place. And how has Sam Briggs not qualified for the games? She's 
Probably has the most invites out of anybody. Has <laughs> qualified through the Open. Could go as a master. Wouldn't be surprised if you found a way to get in as a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> Or on a team, too. I mean, might as well, you well, know. Well, she was on that JST I team. Know, that, you know, I know. That, uh, and Reykjavik was able to qualify. She's on their roster. Crazy. <laughs> Sam Briggs is now past Becca Voigt Miller. And we were talking to some of the legends last night. And they were saying, how did Sam Briggs get in here? <laughs> how was that fair? How was that fair? Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, I don't know. To, to Sam's credit, it's like, okay, maybe maybe take a break on this one. You don't you don't have to go with the absolute big dogs, even though you can. But you know, we were talking about it earlier. When she the one year she didn't go to the games, it was just because of handstand walks. Right. And it's like, wow, you know, not. I mean, that was the game, that was the rules, all that kind of stuff. But should she not have gone? And then here she is. She's the oldest. She's well, the oldest she's ever been. Of course, she's the oldest she's ever been. <laughs> Qualified or invited more, more times than anybody, than anybody. More opportunities to go to the games than anybody. I, I mean, speechless. Now, That's remember back in 2015, ever. she competed at the Atlantic Regional on a broken foot and still qualified. <laughs> <laughs> and you ask her about that kind of stuff, and she just goes, yeah, well, I, I don't know. You said go, and I, I went. Like, it's that simple to her. That, that's what kind of machine she is. Here's Graham Holmberg, the 2010 CrossFit Games champion who played baseball and football at Capital University. Started his games career in 2009 when he finished 19th and he won the, the following year. And I'll tell you what, the beard looks good on him. The beard looks uh, he's, good. He on. told us last night his wife isn't too wild about the beard, but he says he said, I think the beard plays. I'm gonna it, keep it works it. good. I, I, I say go with it. Here comes Sam Briggs. He's gotta drag that bag across the finish line. 50 pounds for the women on that bag. And here comes Becca Voigt, so she's gonna take second place. Samantha Briggs takes it for the women's legend division. Becca Voigt, well on her way towards a second place finish. Yeah, we were talking to Becca last night about uh, all the issues she had with her hand, all the surgeries and stuff she had with the hand. She said she still has one more to go, and she's out here still crushing. Here comes Graham Holmberg. We're going to take first place for the men. Graham Holmberg dragging that bag to the finish line, and he will win this opening event, the first of four events for the Legends. And remember, Rich Froning is going to do a couple of these as well. That'll be fun to watch as we get to see Rich compete as an individual. Danny Broflex himself, Dan Bailey back inside the stadium. Bailey's coming off that quad injury, and he still says he might not be 100%, but getting stronger by the day and looking really good on that bag. Dan Bailey, another recipient of that Spirit of the Games award. Here comes Jason Kalipa. The 2008 CrossFit Games champion is now across the finish line. Man, such a workhorse. And we got a great story last night from Josh Everett about how he was coaching Jason going into the final event of 2008, saying, hey, you know, you want to clean like this? You want to make sure you do all this? And, and Josh said, yeah, that probably wasn't the best idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to remember, it's Jason Kalipa. He's got one He's got one speed, and it's on. It's either on or it's off. I mean, so it's it, not pretty, but it's effective. Yeah, they, you know what? They don't call him the bear for nothing. And Tommy Hackenbrook will get on the sandbag drag. Hackenbrook who was second at the 2009 games, and then his team, Hacks Pack, won back-to-back -back Affiliate Cup championships in 2012 and 2013. Christy phillips Adkins, she's across the finish line, and now Miko Salo, a guy we haven't seen at a competition since 2013. Awesome. Awesome. 
He and Dan Bailey exchanging high fives along with Becca Voigt Miller and now Julie Fouché. And Julie Fouché is in, and look, I know they're using a lighter sandbags and things like that, but look, some of these times are pretty impressive when you compare them to the individuals we just saw go. Come on, they absolutely are. <laughs> Matt Chan is in. Chan's best finish at the CrossFit Games was in 2012 when he finished second to Rich Froning. And here comes Chris Spieler, a crowd favorite who was third at the CrossFit Games in 2010, his best ever finish. And a guy who gave us one of the most memorable moments ever in Carson, California, when he, in 2011, was pushing that dog sled. <laughs> well, you know what? He's been known as a giant killer his entire CrossFit career. He's always been the small guy that moves weights. That bag, I mean, that bag is, what, 30 pounds lighter than he is, 40 pounds lighter than he is, but that's how it's always been. He gets toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys that are 195 pounds, 200 pounds, and it just always moves so well. It just crushes, it just crushes events. And there's Annie Sakamoto. Closing out her event. Best finish at the games was in 2011 when she took ninth. One of the original nasty girls right there. And I don't mean nasty in a bad way. I'm talking about the, the workout of that. And Annie, you know, the what, workout named after her. It, and it has her. I mean, that's cool. When you have a workout, a benchmark workout named after you, that's when you're OG. And here's Josh Everett. Everett, a three-time CrossFit Games competitor. Second in 2008, third in 2007. If you don't know who Josh Everett is, then obviously you've missed the first five years of the competitive <laughs> world of CrossFit. This was one of the original fire breathers. And we don't even say that term anymore, fire breather. This, that was the word for the people that breathed fire, throats were burning, uh, having that Fran cop, all that kind of stuff. This was the guy that guys like myself would check their score to see how fast I think I should go. Um, and if you haven't seen the movie, Every Second Counts, he was one of the characters in that. That was from the 2008 games. Memorable finishes by Josh Everett. you got to check him out if you haven't found out anything about him. Yeah, here comes Kristen Clever, and she is the last American woman to win the CrossFit Games. That was back in 2010. She is across the finish line. And Josh Everett also has that famous piece of video you've probably seen from the original deadlift ladder at the ranch. Oh, yeah. That was back in 2009 when he hit that lift, and... You made he sure everybody nuts. heard him. <laughs> Here comes Tanya Wagner, our broadcast partner most of the time when we've been at the CrossFit Games before. So I know we're supposed to remain impartial here, but I'm not going to be that impartial. I'm not going to be that impartial. Come on, it's legends. Great to see her pushing through here. Now, one of the things she was saying, there were a couple of points that she brought up when I was talking to her about just coming here she said was one i want to make sure that i don't get hurt when i'm training for it which i'll tell you what as an older athlete that is one of the key things it's not about how much work you're doing it's about how can i make sure that i don't get injured because as you get older it takes longer to heal up so i think that was super smart but the second thing that i thought was great was i'm doing this for all the moms i want moms to know that like guess what you can have a kid and you can come out and still do your thing and it doesn't matter if it's like high level or how old you are, you can still come out and, and push the tempo and really push, and that's exactly what Tanya's doing. Tanya Wagner coming across the finish line, a 2009 CrossFit Games champion, and when she won, she got $5,000 to win. Woo! She and her husband, Josh, took a trip up and down the coast of California, and she bought a pair of sunglasses for herself. You know that's what? what the prize money went to for Tanya Wagner. You gotta how go things big. have changed. <laughs> you got to go big when you win your, that prize money. Getting a hug from Julie Fouché and congratulations from her fellow competitors. A great exhibition there from some of the best athletes to ever grace the competition floor in the early days of CrossFit in the CrossFit Games. Jason Kalipa there congratulating Tanya and very proud of Tanya Wagner for getting out there and, great job, Tanya. and throwing down. Good job. Way to represent the broadcast team. Here are the results for the men as 2010 Games champion Graham Holmberg beats Dan Bailey. Jason Kalipa will finish in third, followed by Tommy Hackenbrook. And then Miko Salo for the first time in competition since 2013 on the women's side. Shocking, Sam Briggs, <laughs> the only woman to go sub-10. Becca Voigt Miller will finish in second. 
and it's Christy Phillip Atkins and Julie Fouché rounding out the top four. And I tell you what, I was just ecstatic watching this. I mean, I've been in this game as long as some of these guys, but I'm still a fan of all of these athletes and watching them go for it just makes me smile. It really does make me smile. These are the names, again, if you haven't found out about these names, if you don't know much about these athletes or what they've done, you have to make sure you check it out. Becca, doing exactly what Becca does, workhorse stuff. So came out, looked confident. Um, you know, even though she's been dealing with some injuries and dealing with uh, the operation stuff that she's had on, on her hands, still able to look well. Graham Holmberg looked amazing in that front half of that event. Just strong, very confident, looking like the Graham that we know of. I mean, he was on the demo team last year at the game. So it's not like he's been out of the game and doesn't have athleticism. He totally does. Watching those guys move those sandbags up and over the wall, not a big deal. Moving very well. We see Chris Spieler popping in there, you know, moving those things that are as heavy as he is. And then Sam Briggs comes into the play. And Sam Briggs, they call her the engine for a reason. If there is any sort of event that takes an engine to move, he does it. It's amazing. Let's send it down to Rory McKernan on the field. All right, Sam, I got to talk to you in Reykjavik quite a bit because you're competing with a team. The only way that you haven't qualified for the CrossFit Games is for the, the Masters. So I got to know, what were your goals when you set out at the beginning of the year? Uh, honestly, it was just to make it back to the Games after having elbow surgery and missing out last year. Now, you mentioned on the way out here you were having flashbacks. Kind of walk us through why this is such a cool and unique event. Uh, just some of the girls haven't competed for the last few years, so it's really nice to be back on the floor with them. Just reminded me of the early years, just as the sport was growing. Congratulations on an amazing time, which will definitely hold up in any uh, competition here. Graham, last time we saw you in competition, 2017 regionals. How has training changed, and how did you ramp it up for this event? Yeah, I mean, tr training when you when you're in the hunt for the for the CrossFit Games every year, it's 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 an all day adventure training. Um, now it's it's I'm just thankful and blessed to get a good good hour session in like a everyday person, and occasionally I get two workouts in. But my wife tries to harness me and kind of keep me held back. So it's like, hey, we got three kids, we got to worry about now. So yeah. just take it easy. Well, you're the 2010 champion. What does it mean to be here competing with this Legends group? Uh, it was such an honor. I mean, Columbus has always been, uh, I feel like, a hotbed for really successful CrossFit affiliates and athletes. Um, and then obviously to, to be a part of something that Bill and Katie have, um, I mean, I've seen it from the infancy of what they started, competed at the first 09 regional in the original Rogue Gym, and now to be able to compete in a Legends division here at the first Invitational, such an honor. So just thankful to be a part of it. And we're thankful too. Thank you both for an amazing performance. Thank you, Ro. Two former champions, Graham Holmberg and Samantha Briggs. We've had legends, we've had champions, we've had rookies, we've had teams. We're only through one event here at the Rogue Invitational. We'll be back with event number two at the 2019 Rogue Invitational in Columbus, Ohio.
My name is Rich Froning, four-time CrossFit Games individual champion, two-time Affiliate Cup champion. RP has helped a ton with what time to eat, how much to eat, uh, the quality of food I need to get in. I wasn't eating enough, wasn't getting in enough calories. RP has helped to actually show me that I need more food, I need more carbohydrates. I feel a lot better, I feel stronger. Rosti, we stop pain, so pain doesn't stop you.